And now, from his cell on Pennsylvania's death row, a commentary from Mumia Abu Jamal. Of crazy uncles and kings. It has been 40 years, a lifetime, since Martin Luther King Jr. was felled in Memphis, Tennessee. His life of committed activism and his martyrdom has left an indelible mark upon the world. There were indeed echoes of him in black and some white churches this past Easter, but also in what the corporate media has called incendiary speeches of the Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Reverend Wright's black liberation theology runs like a chain from the life and practice of two prominent black religious leaders of the 20th century, which left their imprint upon the soul and psyche of Reverend Wright. I speak, of course, of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Although condemned as divisive, incendiary, and outrageous by the corporate and right-wing press, I found nothing of the sort to my ears. It actually reminded me of my youth. When working at a white radio station, my boss called me into his office and quietly asked me about the Reverend Leon Sullivan, one of the most prominent religious and business leaders in the country. I can't remember his question, but the gist of it was that he and several other radio executives met with the man and came away unimpressed. It taught me that people are deeply influenced by style, and some styles do not cross cultures well. I tried to communicate to him that Reverend Sullivan was a virtual lion in the community. Indeed, his nickname was the Lion of Zion for the name of his church, Zion Baptist. Different cultures have different styles of speech and communication. I thought of this when the media-generated right controversy arose when, initially, Senator Barack Obama suggested Wright was kind of like a crazy uncle that people invite to Thanksgiving but really don't take too seriously. The life and example of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. also came to mind. And while King has been almost deified by most Americans, like most such men, their words are actually rarely read and those who truly knew them are little heeded. Theologist and historian Dr. Vincent Harding, a close confidant of King, has written about King's last year of life when he turned towards the anti-war and anti-poverty movements, and by so doing earned the enmity of the rich and powerful. None other than the Washington Post condemned him when he criticized the Vietnam War. In an editorial they wrote, he has diminished his usefulness to his cause, to his country, and to his people. Forty years ago, King was assassinated for standing against white supremacy and the U.S. government's thirst for violence and conquest in Vietnam. Today, the corporate media does the job that military and the spy agencies once did for the same masters. Yesterday, it was Martin Luther King Jr. Today, it's the Reverend Dr. Jeremiah Wright. From death row, this is Mumia Abu.